This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters. Today we're examining the question, if these are the days of Lot that the Bible speaks of, and I think most of us watching this video think they are, then what comes next? I mean, are the days of Lot just a sign that Jesus is coming soon? Or should they be a sign of what's going to happen on earth, in society, between now and that return? Are they a sign of what we should expect and what we should be doing? That's what we're talking about today. And before we get started, a quick shout out to Stephen Welp, Jonathan Merrill, Britt Ashley, and Michael Tarrant, all of whom helped us research this video. Lots of you are sending stuff in on this very topic. Now, I'm sure most of you have been absolutely flabbergasted about what our culture has become in the last seven years. As it seems, almost every year, a new letter is being added to what many of us call the Alphabet Society. You know which one I mean. Now, listen to this brief video clip that speaks of how society is now not only accepting this lifestyle, but grooming kids to fit into this alphabet. This spring, I was required to attend a department training called Creating Gender Inclusive Schools. The training began with a statement made by a staff member that included the statement, no matter what the pushback, we are not going back regarding the gender inclusion approach in our district. Some of the things that were presented by the Welcoming Schools group included the following. We were instructed to discuss our definition of gender. I immediately felt uncomfortable because I had a feeling that if I gave the definition of gender that I agree with, I would be labeled as judgmental. We were given the definition of gender according to this speaker. Gender is determined by time and space, boy, girl, a blend of both, or neither, none of which were based on biology. A statement was also made that because of white supremacy, gender expansiveness has been suppressed. But now, because of the media, students feel free to express themselves. Hearing the mindset that exists at the upper level of our school district showed me that as a staff member, I am being pressured to teach concepts in direct conflict with my beliefs, which are not in alignment with that perspective of gender. He also said, yes, we are going to talk about this with young students. I imagine you noticed the reference in the clip to government, the school district, and media driving this process, and how they blame white supremacy and Christianity for the intolerance and the lack of acceptance that this alphabet group is receiving. And this is one of the main purposes that government and media have in forcing this issue on us to create good guys and bad guys, even though it's calling evil good and good evil, as per Isaiah 5.20. You know the verse. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. So this is being done to choose those who will be persecuted in the future. It's setting up persecution. We need to know that. That's what this is all about. So what's coming next? <laughs> in a way, persecution. So this is what we're dealing with in society. And when you mention Sodom, you're being persecuted all the more. No one wants to hear about the ancient city of Sodom which is where the days of Lot took place. Yet, in addition to Jesus, Peter and Jude in the Bible both mentioned Sodom as a warning symbol for societies after them of what is going to happen. Here's what Peter said. By turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he, meaning God, condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. This means that the ashes of Sodom remain on this earth as an example to us of what happened way back then. On the west bank of the Dead Sea are clear remnants of walls, buildings, statues, not made out of stone like other places where there are remnants of old cities, but turned into ash by fire several thousand degrees hot. 
and remains of sulfur balls embedded into the ashes. Brimstone, after all, is sulfur. At the end of this video, we'll link to another video that goes into these remains in great deal, and we suggest you take a look at that because it's very interesting. But even if the world ignores them, we must not. We must not ignore these remains, especially since Jesus specifically mentioned Lot and his trial that took place there, and he mentioned it by name. And since Jesus indicated this in the 17th chapter of Luke, maybe we should turn there to figure out where all of this is going. So after telling us the end times would be like the days of Noah, Jesus immediately told us that they would also be like the days of Lot, the time that Lot spent down in Sodom. Now, a lot of conservative scholars read those sections and reason that both of these analogies are simply there to tell us that the coming of Jesus will be sudden and unexpected by the unsaved in the world. And certainly, that, you know, that's a major part of what Jesus is teaching us. That's a big portion of what the days of Lot means, that the unsaved will be taken by complete shock. But that is not all. Because if it was all, then only one analogy would have been enough. But Jesus included a second, the days of Lot. He was providing the wise among us with a deeper understanding of what the end times will be like. And that's why you're watching this video, because you want to see that. Now, if you doubt that, even for a minute, consider what our world is like right now. Consider the LGBTQ mania that's taking place everywhere. Never in history has the world been like this. It is absolute proof of what Jesus' prophecy was saying. It's proof that it's coming true to deny the days of Lot don't have to anything to do with the situation in our society today is to be completely blind. Now, if you're liking what you're hearing so far in this video, you're welcome. That's what all those folks that helped us research this video, our video team, our ministry, that's what we're all about. To present what's happening in the world that you see all around you in a little bit different light than you may have seen elsewhere and especially to dig into the scriptures in a way that you probably haven't seen before, to help open them up to you so you can understand them. So let's dig into the prophecy in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, see, he's saying it's similar to the analogy he just gave for the days of Noah. Just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, there's a familiar phrase for you, and we're going to discuss it in a little bit. Planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So it will be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Notice Jesus compares the day of his return with the day that Lot went out of Sodom. That's the day we need to examine closely and look at where our society is going. This account of Sodom and the five cities of the plain are recorded in Genesis 18 and 19. So let's turn back in the Bible and look at this because this day that they record is the day Jesus highlighted. Now the day began in Genesis 18, on the day that God and two angels visited Abraham and Sarah in their tent to tell them that Isaac would be born the following year. Now, as the sun was going down, God sent his two angels, so it's that same day because, you know, Hebrew days begin in the evening. God sent his two angels down to Sodom to judge it. And Abraham tried to negotiate on behalf of his family that were still living there, you know, Lot's family. Abraham asked God if he would destroy the city if he found 50 righteous still living there. God said no. Then 45, 40, you know, Abraham kept working God down all the way to 10. And that's where the negotiation stopped, at 10 righteous people. God said for the sake of 10 righteous people, he would not destroy the city. Obviously from history, we know that since God did destroy Sodom later that day, and remember, 
days in Hebrew start in the evening, there weren't 10 righteous people in Sodom. And Jesus said it will be just like that on the day of his appearing. Just like that. This is the first point and a really important point. Will this 10-person negotiation hold up in the future on the day Jesus appears in the clouds? I say most likely it will. This means that on the whole earth, not 10 people will be righteous on that day. Think about how could this be possible? Well, if Jesus resurrects and raptures all the righteous from the earth earlier on that same day, before he pours out his fire and brimstone on it, the criteria will be met because every righteous person, every person who's in Christ, will be taken up into the clouds. The righteous would be removed from the earth prior to the fire. However, if Jesus resurrects and raptures years earlier than his appearing, others, so-called tribulation saints, would come to faith in the intervening years, and would be on the earth, maybe millions of them. And this would not fulfill the days of Lot and Algae. If you thought Jesus raptures us years prior to pouring out fire and brimstone, consider this analogy and why it makes that very unlikely. So, that's point one. Now, Lot lived in Sodom, and he had a house there. We find that out later in the account. But initially, when Abraham and Lot separated, because they were hanging out together and then there wasn't enough land for their animals and they separated. One went to the east, one went to the west. Lot chose to move to the east, to Sodom, because it was more economically attractive. It was really good land. In fact, it was described at that time to be like the Garden of God, like the Garden of Eden. That's how nice it was around Sodom from an agricultural standpoint. And Lot pitched his tent near Sodom. But by this time, when we get to Genesis 19, he wasn't living outside of town in a tent. He'd move right into town. Now, Lot is symbolic of Christians in the end times, and most of us have moved right into town, so to speak, right into the illicit culture. When Revelation 18.5 tells us to come out of her, my people, it's talking about leaving the corrupt, evil society we're in. You know, eventually Lot leaves Sodom, but it's not the way he should have left it, which would have been years previous. Now, after God's negotiation with Abraham, the two angels sent by God arrive in Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate. Lot immediately offered to allow these angels to spend the night in his house. And the angels balked at first and said, no, 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 we're going to sleep out in the courtyard. But Lot insisted, vigorously insisted. Why? Because he knew what was about to happen because he'd seen it happen before. It is one of the more horrific passages in the Bible. In Genesis 19, 4 through 5, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, notice that phrase, surrounded the house and they called to Lot. Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may sexually know them. This is why Lot insisted the men come inside the house. He knew this is how the men of his city treated strangers. And notice, it was all the men to the last man, young and old. Every single man in the city was involved in this horror. That included the king, the nobles, the judges, the police, all of them. Even if the city was relatively small by modern standards, It was hundreds of men. Remember, this is the day Jesus was speaking of, the day that Lot went out of Sodom. So this is part of the analogy with the days that are here and are coming. Jesus is telling us that the days that are coming will be days of violence, days of sexual violence against women and men, days when this sort of thing is condoned and accepted by society 
and government. And after this mob assembles, Lot goes outside his door and he tells them to go away because the men had come under the protection of his roof. This phrase, protection of his roof, apparently was a law at the time because here's how the mob responds. This fellow came to sojourn and he has become the judge. So they knew the law. They knew that Lot was correct, but they were ignoring the law and the king and the judges and the police were all in the crowd. This lawlessness, ignoring what the law says, is also what's coming in the near future. Total lawlessness, total disregard of the law. This is what the days of Lot imply as well when Jesus used that phrase. Now, here are some videos of how those who speak about the alphabet soup society are treated. They're treated violently with great hostility. And this is exactly what I envision going on outside of Lot's house 4,000 years ago. So why so much violence? Because they are listening to the voice of Satan and he hates the followers of the Lord. He loves violence. We have a society that's heading in that direction. Returning to Genesis 19, Lot is then informed by the angels that they are about to destroy the city because the outcry against the city has become great. Outcry to whom? To God, obviously. So should we be crying out to God about our society? Of course, and God will answer. But not likely in the way that most are thinking. He isn't going to reform the society. Most likely, he is going to destroy it. The angels then tell Lot to warn his family and extended family about the coming destruction. This is still in the night. This is before daytime. And Lot then leaves his house and went and warned his son-in-laws. But the Bible says they thought he was joking around. Are you extremely frustrated by your family members, church members, and even your pastor who may ignore your warnings about what's coming on the earth? It's just like this story. Do you realize this is part of the days of Lot analogy? This is what Jesus said would happen. The same thing happened to Lot. This isn't unexpected. This is exactly what Jesus said would happen when he called these the days of Lot. So all of us should expect to be ridiculed and ignored. Later, even Lot's wife would turn around and longingly look back at Sodom, you know, and turn into a pillar of salt. Even our immediate families may ignore our warnings. However, the very last line of this account in Genesis 19 is extremely encouraging. Look what it says. So it was that when God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot lived. Genesis 19.29 Did you notice that? God remembered the righteous man, Abraham, the one who cared about Lot. God saved Lot for Abraham's sake. So even if your family isn't listening, God may save them for your sake. So keep praying. Jesus' comments about what people are doing during the last days, during the days of Lot, include mention of eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, and building. All things the people of Sodom were doing prior to their destruction. I'm sure buying and selling caught your ear. It's obvious that these people have taken the mark of the beast because that is the only way someone is going to buy and sell at that time right before Jesus' return. And planting and building are things someone does if they think they have a long time left. Remember Jesus' parable of the man who built the bigger barns, but his soul was required of him that night, and Jesus called him a fool. So the unrighteous are oblivious to what's coming. And all those plants that they planted were burned, and the buildings were vaporized. That is a warning to us as well. To build, as Paul instructed, with gold and precious stones, not wood, hay, and stubble that will be burned up. In other words, 
Build using the Holy Spirit to build the kingdom rather than using earthly stubble that only gets burned up in the fire that's going to come. And as we mentioned earlier in the video, the remains of Sodom can be seen to this day. Click right here to keep watching and discover the amazing runes that still exist on the shore of the Dead Sea and what they mean to us today. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.